Thank you. Good afternoon. It's uh, 7 a.m. in San Francisco, so I'm finally awake. Um, a little bit of coffee, too. Super excited to talk to you about this. I wish I had more time, so I'm going to hit some highlights. My goal is you walk out in 15 minutes. It gives you some ideas to think about, because everyone's somewhere in their evolution of where their IT organization is and adapting to a DevOps world. And that's my whole point in this um, talk today. So I want to share a quote. This actually comes from Pink, this last Pink 17 in Vegas. I was there, and I heard George Spaulding on Fallen Light. He's a very colorful, interesting uh, gentleman that is, works with Pink. And he shared this quote from the stage. And, and Pink 17 is one of the um, standard bearers for certification of ITIL. And it's a very large uh, IT conference this year. And to hear him say up there that IT organizations, if they are not planning now and have not started, they are way behind. I think a lot of you may uh, realize that or are well ahead of that. But it was just the, re the reaction in the room by different IT organizations that are more traditional. You know, we know the unicorns from the ground up. But those that are more traditional have to change the way that they do IT operations and IT support. It was a really an eye-opening one. And there's a quite a bit around that they've uh, shared. Now, what, what's driving this? And all of us are feeling it, and both within Elastium, but yourself. And we live in a services first world. You think about just in a personal, in your own personal life, how much you depend upon if you go to your applications on your phone, that if they are not working properly, it has an impact on your day. And that, that's our impact. But what is that to the business? Two key aspects in driving this are both the IT organization as well as developers and software. And IT sits between them because the business is on the other side. And so service management is a key aspect of that. I, I work in our enterprise organization. And part of my um, job is talking to customers and helping them and guiding them through the path as they standardize and work through their journey on service management. Now, service management can be both externally facing, and a lot of them are using Service Desk for that today from an ITSM uh, standpoint. And what I want to focus on in, in this talk is how do we take teams that are working in different tools and bring them together and make that journey and begin that part of it. And so that's what I want to start with and talk about there's a wall, there's a barrier here, and this is a barrier that comes down over time. And I'll talk about some insights that hopefully you'll, you can take back and start researching and understanding. Now, first, I want to start with some stats. Back in April, we worked with HDI. And HDI Help Desk Institute um, globally, they surveyed 150,000 member audience, very active, um, very um, knowledgeable in what's going on to support the pain points of that. And they looked at how, where are you at with your DevOps journey? And so we've published as a blog. I would recommend going back. If you have not read the blog, we published the results. You can go through as well as you can get the HDI paper on this. And what we found is that 74% of IT teams are actually finding out after new releases of software are operationalized. That was a fairly large number. And these are teams that are standardized on change management and their ITIL practices, and yet these software releases are going on. That was really fascinating. The number was that high and had not been integrated. They also found that 99% were actually unprepared for those releases. Well, why is that? Because 28% of their tools are currently not integrated with the development team. And so that number was also much lower. And I, I hear this time and time again. They have some sort of ITSM, traditional legacy tool. They have to either throw it over the wall, and there's no sharing of data. Whereas if we're on the same platform, the insights and the integration are there and out of the box for us. And so that's an important part. The other part of this in the survey is that you think about the knowledge that's learned by an ITF-facing operations team that's getting feedback. Yeah, obviously, they're responding to outages and issues, but they're also getting valuable feedback. And of that feedback, only 34% of it is being analyzed and fed back to the dev team. Last year at Summit in the US, our internal team uh, talked about how our, our SRE's um, customer support team is taking that feedback and feeding it right back into our product team. And it's so key. So there's some great insights in that. And you can find that or find me afterwards, and I'll point you where to find that. So I want to talk about how dev and IT are better together, and we transform the IT teams. I'm going to primarily focus on the technology aspect of it. And I'll talk about the other components that are just as important. But it's, it's this, you know, this continuous loop of where does IT fit in in this. And the continuous feedback is an important aspect, as well as what do they do operationally. I'll focus primarily on incident management. But there's about three or four other areas if I had time I'd love to go into. And you'll find quite a bit of it's been written about this on um, the IT. Uh, we have it, um, the IT space. I'll think of it as we're going along here in a minute. It's been a um, longer day for me here. So my mind to catch up. Um, IT Unplugged, 
If you haven't been there yet, Atlassian's kind of a way we share content. There's a lot of DevOps resources, and you'll find quite a bit published about that. So what I want to talk about is transferring an IT team, and we're moving towards the DevOps. Let's say you're more traditionally, they're separated from your development teams. That's what Carol talked about this morning. Carol Johnson, if, how many of you attended the um, Daily Telegraph talk this morning? Okay, if you did not catch it, and you're very interested in this, I love it, because Carol's journey talked about two years ago, they went from a legacy tool to Jira Service Desk. They transformed the way that they deliver global service management to their end users, and it was a compelling story. They are back two years later talking about now how they've embedded their IT operations teams within the de different development teams. And what I love about Carol's talk is she talks about the pain in that journey because it is all about people and culture transformation, changing the way that teams work. And that's so important in this. I know if you've read The Phoenix Project by um, Gene Kim, that's a fantastic insight. If you haven't, you get a chance to read that. It does talk about this transformation that has to happen. And, and that's the part I won't get time to highlight, but that is so much an important part of it. And also where the Alassian um, team playbooks come in and you can start to understand, where is my team today? If I move this IT operations, this small subset of team over here, how are they gonna work together? How are we gonna improve the way that they work? And that's what Carol talked about. Some of the pain that they found, but as they became more autonomous and they gave them the tools they needed, they had kind of that aha moment, that breakthrough, and now today the improvements are pretty significant, and she shares that. The other part of that is process. I think it's really important if this is the way we traditionally respond to incidents, but if we put that incident in the response to a critical service, is that the appropriate process? Does it need to be streamlined? Does it need to be updated and changed in the way that they respond? And then obviously the technology, removing the silos and bringing these teams together, and that's what I want to talk about. So scaling IT operations, um, I want to talk about th uh, four areas, the transformation, centralization, communication, and automation, then I'll, I'll focus on the incident. So first of all, areas that I think you need to think about, and most of you probably have IT operations teams that follow some level of ITIL. It is the gold standard today, and it's, it is evolving, adapting, and I'd say that lean is starting to catch up. In fact, um, I've seen quite a few publications from Axios on this. And so what I have found through some of the studies I'm looking at and customers that are just um, looking at the journey is they, they're saying, where can I improve upon the way that these teams operate from a process perspective and fall into an alliance? For one example, if I place my IT operations team with the different service teams, are they aligned to their sprints? Do they understand them? Are they, are they on the same page in the technologies and the way that they operate? And so a great publication they published this year, I was really pleased to see this, they published two IT, um, DevOps publications from Axios. The first one is ITIL and DevOps getting started. The other one's on Kanban boards. So they're finally, it's, it's taken a little while and I would say maybe a little bit behind, but what they're publishing is very good insights that you can come back and apply and think about, all right, if we're starting to scale out and embed these teams in these different development teams, what do I need to account for? The other thing is centralization. I work with a lot of teams that maybe their first deployment of Service Desk is to a, a they might deploy the entire organization. It was just last week with a customer that's leaving ServiceNow, and one is software initiatives driving it and also cost. And so it, it, whether it's that initiative or they're putting Service Desk in for a very dedicated um, development IT operations team, we need to think about what is needed for that team. Great, we're on the same platform, but also there's additional add-ons. And I'm, I think in the last several year, like six months to a year, we've gone from 200 dedicated add-ons to over 350 in the Atlassian marketplace. So for Splunk, I worked with Splunk for a long time, uh, with Splunk as a sales engineer, fantastic for insights. What kind of information is needed for that team to be more effective? And there's just a whole list of them. Um, I don't have time to go through them, but if you are wondering later on, come see me and I can be glad to um, offer some of those insights up to you. So that's an, a key part of that, is I bring them not only to the same application, but what, uh, what do I need to integrate? What do I need to bring into that? And I'll talk more about some other th data in a few minutes. The other way is communicate. Communications is so key. Oftentimes we may send an email, but that's not quite enough. And that's where our status page, I'm seeing more and more of these teams, even if they're internal, to be able to communicate via some uh, status page. And so you, if you saw the briefing earlier, great. Um, if you didn't, you can get quite a information. Allows me to communicate. We have an outage. We're down. And that communication gains the trust of your customers and the confidence of them, both internal and external. Automation. Automation is so key. 
And I use the example here, if I have a linked issue that I've placed something into the backlog of the developers, in other solutions, I would have to play ping pong of information, of emails, of, uh, of a message. Here, I can automate to where if the, they ship it or they fix it or they update it, I'm going to be updated in the loop as the IT operations team. I see this automation rule with no programming, no scripting. This is out of the box there and making them much more effective. So how is automation critical? What are the ways that you need to not only apply it to the development team, but also the IT, uh, um, IT operations? So in the last few minutes I have, I want to focus on incident management. Mean time to resolution is the area to focus on. It's probably one of the key parts of the process that they need. So I would review the process, finding out where it is that I need to improve and what Gartner has found in mean time to resolution, that mean time to investigate and diagnose, 70% of the time. What can I do here to improve? Add-ons for insights such as, you know, Nagio, Splunk, whatever, those types of insights I can bring directly to them is key. And so what can I do improving upon these different aspects? One of those is chat ops. Placing the tool in the middle of the conversation. Even if they have another corporate chat tool standard, I see a lot of teams that are using HipChat because it allows them to swarm more effectively. They launch a dedicated chat room for that incident, and they are more effective in that way. They lower their overall incident time. The other one that I can just cite a bunch of times is that service catalog, documenting the services that you have so I know who owns it, the details of the service, this can be consumed externally, but it's really critical IT operations teams. So I know I can go in and get the details of the service and who to work with, and what's the components of the service. Now, the next part, we have the outage. I'm the first agent touching the incident. Runbooks. Runbooks are typically out in other documents externally. Bringing those into Confluence allows us to have, if I'm the first touch agent, I know exactly what systems to go check, what log systems to go check. So if it's not in my incident, I can now one click away and I'm into those insights. So that's really key in that regard. And if you have more questions about runbooks, I see this used over and over again. It improves. In fact, internally at Alassian, they saw a 40% improvement over first time touch incident response resolution within our own internal teams. Last part. This is the last part that a lot of teams struggle with. Post incident reviews taking time to learn. This is where the feedback loop goes back to the development team. You're on the same page with them. Developers are part of the post incident review. We are able to then figure out what we need to do as action items. Is there a longer term problem investigation? What actions are taken? What feedback is going to the development team? The other thing is it's not only improving the way that we respond as incidents and overall on the service, I'm improving what we ship as an overall product and service as well. And I find that a lot of teams consume these reports outside of IT operations that's critical for the business. So in a very quick summary there, that's a, a quick look at incident. There's other areas. But what I would encourage you, we've got it, ITM Plug's got a lot of great resources around DevOps. Take a look at those, a lot of webinars, how we've Im implemented it. I would also invest in not only your learning, but also investing in a culture in the way that you can transform. Because that's the hard part that Carol talked about is how do I get there and help my team? If I'm very used to it as an IT organization operating this way and devs operate in sprint cycles, that's very foreign. So how can I help them move in that direction? Um, and so that's a key part of it. Seek to understand the greatest opportunity, obviously starting small, what aligns the business, and then begin with smaller. What I see is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handle this service first, I'm going to deploy this part of IT operations, and then we will scale and grow from there. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and see if we have any questions, because I know I'm coming up on time. 